Welcome and Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. My name is Zach Lasker. I have the honor of being both the executive director and our resident yoga instructor. I want to make sure that you're prepared, that you have everything in order, paying tribute to our class last week. Um, please unfold your mat. And for uh, props today, a strap or a belt or a long piece of rope will really serve you well at the start of our practice. So we're living in the age of adaptation. Um, I have an official yoga strap, you may as well. You can also use the type of belt that you put around your pants or a skirt. And then towards the end of the practice, if you have access to blocks or books, um, these will become options. Um, also, if you have sensitive wrists, when we're in downward facing dog or in plank position, it's always helpful to put blocks underneath your hands as a way to take pressure off of your wrists. And then finally, if you want um, to enjoy a restorative pose at the end of the practice, um, you might want to grab a pillow or if you have access to um, a blanket or a towel that can serve you well. So just take another one or two minutes to gather your props. We are gonna begin. We are dedicating our yoga practice these days, these weeks to the Jewish tradition of Musar. Musar is, is a pathway towards ethical, human-centered, decent behavior. And along that pathway are several, what are referred to as soul traits. Each one of these soul traits is an attribute that can serve us well in our goal to be holy, to be good people, to be mensches. We started several weeks ago, we've looked at the attributes of humility, of patience, gratitude, compassion, and order. And our next stop today is to look at the soul trait of equanimity even temperness, our ability to remain calm, cool, collected in the heat of our practice and our life, and also to remain calm and cool during the ups and joys and amazingness of life, to not get carried away or swept away in either direction. I want to have a start in Sukhasana in a cross-legged pose. Please Stack your right shin in front of your left shin. Place your hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. If you have compression in your lower back, you can sit up on a block or a book. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And an audible exhale out your mouth. Again, inhale. And exhale. And continue that slow and steady cycle of breath. And I want to further introduce this idea, this soul attribute of equanimity, which in Hebrew is often referred to as minuchat hanefesh, resting of the soul. And the scholar who um, I am most uh, integrating into this course, um, Alan Marinus, who is a scholar of Musar, talks about how attractive it is during these turbulent and uncertain times to lean into equanimity. And Marinus cautions that it's so seductive to think of a total escape from the storms and turmoil of life, the place of infinite and permanent calm beckons so invitingly that we can easily overlook the possibility that the serenity we seek would be nothing but a velvet lined jail cell. The Musar teachers see the importance of a calm soul, but they don't see that inner state as a final station called peace and tranquility, where the journey ends even as life continues. Instead, 
They view equanimity as an inner balance that coexists with a world and an experience that accepts turbulence and even turmoil because that's just the way that life is. Switch the crossing of your shins. And what Marinus's words mean to me is that there can be a mistaken idea that someone who really leans into a meditation practice and is trying to seek equanimity ultimately is in this permanent state of calmness where they're able to completely shut out the world. And that is totally counter to what this soul trait of equanimity is really about. When we work on equanimity, we are present for those ups and downs, for the heat of life, for the joys of life, but we're able to sustain ourselves with this even temperness, with an ability to be present without getting overly attached to those forces that might pull us in opposite directions. And that's precisely what we're going to work on in our yoga practice today. Being in the moment, being in the pose, feeling at times heat and tension, not allowing ourselves to cross over into the threshold of pain. So please back off if you feel that you're at risk of injury, but otherwise being present in that heat and softening our tongue, softening our soul. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. One more time, inhale and exhale. Come to lie on your back with your knees bent, your feet planted on the floor. Please grab your strap or your rope or your belt, whichever you're practicing with. Have it right by your hand. And inhale, draw your knees into your chest. Interlace your fingers around your right knee. Exhale, extend your left leg out towards the front of the room. Lengthen through the left side of your torso. Feel your left leg grow longer towards the front of the room. Inhale, draw your right knee in closer to your right armpit and exhale. And inhale and exhale. Inhale to draw your left knee into your chest. Extend your right leg forward, interlace your fingers around your left knee, lower down onto your right heel lengthen through the right side of your torso and leg towards the front of the room. Stamp your right foot on the wall in front of you. And as you inhale, draw that left knee closer to your left armpit and exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest and then lower both feet onto the ground. Take your strap or your rope, loop it around the ball of your right foot and extend your right foot up to the ceiling. Start to walk your hands up the strap to straighten your arms, take the bend out of your elbow but keep your shoulder blades planted on the mat. Inhale and exhale. And now extend that left leg forward. Keep your left heel grounded into the mat. Imagine again that you're stamping your left foot on the wall in front of you and stamping your right foot on the ceiling above you. And here we are already in our first pose of being pulled in different directions. Feeling a little bit of heat in that right hamstring. It's a great opening stretch. 
And the key of practicing equanimity in yoga, in life, is to observe those sensations without growing overly attached to them. Take both ends of the strap into your right hand, extend your left arm out to the left, and then start to draw your right foot over to the right side of the room, bend your right elbow, lower your right upper arm onto the ground, turn your gaze over to the left, two cycles of breath, opening up the hip and stretching the groin. This will serve us well later on in the practice. One more inhale and exhale, right foot back up towards the ceiling. Take both hands onto the strap and then bend your left knee, plant your left foot on the ground, start to bend your right knee, remove the strap and lower your right foot onto the ground. And second side, loop the strap over the ball of your left foot Straighten your left foot up towards the ceiling. Imagine that you're stamping that left foot on the ceiling above you. Start to walk your hands up the strap towards your left foot while keeping your shoulders melted into the ground. Couple cycles of breath, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And as you take your next inhale, straighten your right leg towards the front of the room. Stamp that right foot on the wall in front of you. And energetically reach up higher through that left foot, stamping your left foot on the ceiling above you. Feeling a little bit of that heat as you stretch in opposite directions. Maintaining your composure. And how do we maintain composure in yoga? What's one of the best, most effective ways? It's through the breath. Mindful breathing, inhale and exhale. Take both ends of the strap into your left hand. Draw your left leg over to the left side of the room as your right arm extends out to the right and your gaze extends out to the right. Another couple cycles of breath. You can bend your left elbow, lower your left upper arm onto the ground. And then with your next exhale, draw that left foot back up towards the ceiling. Take your right hand, put it on the right side of the strap, bend your right knee, plant your right foot on the ground, and then start to bend your left knee, lower your left foot on the ground. You can put the strap off to the side, draw both knees into your chest, and then rock and roll forward and back building up some momentum and roll over and come into a tabletop position. So in a tabletop position, your hands are pointed, your fingers are pointed towards the top of the mat, index finger in particular towards the top of the mat. Space out your fingers. Shoulders are directly above the wrists. Knees are directly underneath the hips. And let's take a couple cat-cow. Inhale into cow position. Shine your chest and heart forward. Arch your back, lift your tush up. And exhale, round your back. Draw your belly into your chest, into cat. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. One more time, we're gonna hold. Inhale into cow position. Hold that cow position. Arch your back, 
Shine your chest forward towards the front of the room. And then exhale, round your back, draw your belly into the chest. Again, we're gonna hold the position. Often in yoga, we're drawing our shoulder blades together. This time, we're letting them drop down towards the ground. And just when you think you've hit your limit, draw your belly even further into your chest and then exhale back into a neutral position, tabletop. Inhale, stretch your right leg back and be mindful of your knees. If you have sensitive knees, please double over your mat or slip a towel or a blanket underneath your knees. Keep your right leg extended in the air pressing your right foot towards the back of the room. Rotate the inner part of your, rep, your right thigh up towards the ceiling. Working on your balance. Engage your core. And exhale, bend your right knee, right knee parallel to your left knee. Second side, inhale, stretch your left leg towards the back of the room. Rotate your inner left thigh up towards the ceiling. Point your left toes down towards the ground. Inhale. And exhale, bend your left knee, left knee parallel to your right knee. We're gonna build on and start to work further on our balance trying to maintain this equanimity, this even temperness. Inhale, right leg back and exhale. Inhale, left arm forward and exhale. Inhale, lengthen through your right leg towards the back of the room and exhale. Inhale, lengthen through the left side of your torso towards the front of the room which is going to extend your left arm further forward and engage that core. And you might start to shake. So rather than retreating, make an observation, soften your tongue, And exhale, lower your left hand, lower your right knee down, and pause for a moment. Take one cow, take one cat, and second side. Inhale, left leg reaches towards the back of the room. And for some, this might be plenty, this might be your vigorous balance pose for right now. And that's totally cool. Remembering never to cross over into the threshold of pain. Others, we're gonna reach our right arm forward, growing longer through the left leg towards the back of the room as you stamp your left foot on the wall in back of you, lengthening through the right side of your torso towards the front of the room. One more inhale, exhale, lower your right hand, lower your left knee, bring your big toes to touch, shift your hips back onto your heels, start to nestle your torso between your thighs, lower your forearms onto the ground, lower your forehead onto the ground. Resting in balasana in child's pose, we're gonna take several cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale. I wanna draw in the teaching of insight meditation teacher, Sharon Salzberg, who speaks of equanimity as a spacious stillness of mind within which we can remain connected to others and all that happens around us 
while remaining free of our conditioned habit of grasping at the pleasant and pushing away the unpleasant. So our goal is to be present in these poses, to notice the heat, to notice the joy of the stretch without grasping onto it or pushing it away. Take another inhale and exhale. Start to walk your hands forward to lengthen your arms and straighten them. Elbows come off the mat. Come back into that tabletop position and reach your right leg back. Lower your right foot onto the ground directly in back of your left foot, lower onto the inner part of your right foot, and then rooting down through your left hand, rotate your right arm up towards the ceiling. This is a modified side plank pose, modified Vashistasana. Another opportunity to work on our balance. Inhale and exhale. And if you'd like to add on, inhale, lift your right leg so that it's parallel to the ground. One more inhale. And exhale, lower your right hand down to the ground, lower your right knee back down to the ground, right next to your left knee. So you're back in a tabletop position and second side. Inhale to stretch your left leg back and then turn your left hip up towards the ceiling, lower your left foot down onto the ground, rest on the inner part of your left foot, root down through your right hand and start to lift your left arm up towards the ceiling Stack your top hip right above your bottom hip. You might start to shake. That's part of it. Inhale and exhale. And if you'd like to add on, inhale to lift your left leg up so that it's parallel to the ground shooting out of your left hip. Take one more cycle of breath. And then with your next exhale, lower your left hand to the ground, lower your left knee to the ground, and you're back in tabletop position. Let's take another child's pose. So draw your toes together, shift your hips onto your heels, lower your forearms onto the ground and forehead onto the ground. Take a couple cycles of breath to inhale and exhale. And then one more time, come back up into the tabletop position. Again, if you have sensitive knees, have something underneath your knees and stand up on your knees. Hands on your hips. Step your right foot out so that it is uh, perpendicular to your left knee. So you want your right foot facing towards the right side of the room. With your hands on your hips, rotate your hips towards the front of the room. And inhale. And exhale. And during this section of our yoga practice, during our warm up, part of what we're doing is opening up the hips and stretching the groin so that it is prepared for the poses that will come later. Lengthen your right leg, straighten it so that you're on your right heel. Again, keep your hips 
center towards the front of the room. Take one more inhale. And exhale. Bend your right knee and then lower your right knee so that it's parallel to your left knee. Second side, step your left foot out so that it's perpendicular to your right knee. Left toes face towards the left side of the room, hands back on your hips, rotate your hips towards the front of the room. Take an inhale and exhale. And then start to straighten your left leg, come onto your left heel. With your hips, rotate them towards the center. That's what's really going to help you open up that left hip and stretch that left groin. Take one more inhale. And exhale. Bend your left knee and lower your left knee onto the ground. And let's return to child's pose one last time. Lower your forearms onto the ground, hips back onto your heels, forehead onto the ground. Another great way to open up your hips. And then walk your hands forward, shift your torso forward through tabletop, directly tucking your toes, shifting your hips up and back, and coming into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Rotate your heels out towards opposite sides of the room. It's going to help you to spin your inner thighs towards the back of the room. Push down into the ground, rebound up through your arms, through your torso, and then turn your gaze between your palms. Start to walk your feet towards your wrists till you find yourself in a forward fold. Have a slight bend in your knees. You're in Uttanasana, forward fold. Grab onto opposite elbows. You can start to straighten your legs. And then rotate your torso from right to left and left to right. Switch the crossing of your forearms, grab onto opposite, opposite elbows. Release your fingertips towards the ground and then slowly start to rise up. Keep your gaze on the ground, lifting up one vertebra at a time until you're standing up straight in Tadasana in mountain pose. Step your feet together, big toes touching. And inhale. And exhale. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down into Tadasana, mountain pose. Root down through your feet. Lift up through your kneecaps. Elongate through all four sides of your torso. Spread your collarbones and draw your shoulder blades together while simultaneously softening your belly. Lift up to the crown of your head 
and let your eyes close. And standing right now in Tadasana, we are actually in our first peak pose. Tadasana is such a beautiful example of how we can position ourselves with the soul trait of equanimity, menuchat hanefesh. Think about a mountain and how it weathers through so many different circumstances. It survives extreme heat, storms, rain, snow, hurricanes. Through this position of strength and evenness. And so, of course, it's rather accessible to, act, to stand in Tadasana in mountain pose without any other actions of the body. We're gonna see if we can bring this strength, this evenness that you find in Tadasana into our other poses. Thich Nhat Hanh says that the Sanskrit word upiksha means equanimity or non-attachment. Upa means over and iksh means to look. You climb the mountain to be able to look over the whole situation, not bound by one side or the other. We're gonna move forward. You can open your eyes, inhale arms up, flowing through a sun salutation, exhale folding forward, fingertips touch the ground, your ankles or shins, inhale lift up halfway, flatten your back, Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. You're in plank position. You can modify by bending your knees and lowering them down. Inhale, shift your torso forward. Exhale, bend your elbows. Lower halfway down or all the way down. Inhale, roll over your toes into upward facing dog or into low cobra, spread your collarbones, draw your shoulder blades together, and then exhale, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, turn your gaze between your palms. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Step your left leg to meet it. You're in forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up, arms up, Uttita Hastasana. And exhale, arms down into Tadasana mountain pose. Again, we're going to build on inhale arms up, Uttita Hastasana, exhale folding forward, Uttanasana, inhale Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up, exhale release into Uttanasana, bend your knees, flatten your palms, inhale step your left leg back, Step your right leg to meet it. You're in plank or modified plank with your knees bent and on the ground. Inhale, shift your torso forward, shoulders go beyond your wrists. Exhale, bend your elbows, lower halfway down. Inhale, roll over your toes. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Exhale, tuck your toes. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up and back. Exhale, bend your right knee, draw it into your chest. Step your right foot forward, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up into a high lunge. 
and exhale. Inhale, lengthen through all four sides of your torso to reach your arms further up towards the ceiling and exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, lower your hands inside your right foot. Heel toe your right foot towards the edge, the right edge of your mat. And then lower on to your forearms as we come into a lizard pose. It's another great way to open up the hip and stretch the groin. And then roll your right foot onto the side so that you're on the outer portion of your right foot. Your right knee lowers towards the ground. And a modification is to stay on your hands. That's totally cool as well. Take another couple cycles of breath, whichever version of lizard you're in. Inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. And as you exhale, plant your right foot back on the ground. If your forearms are down, come back up onto your hands. Tuck your left toes. Lift your left knee up. Step your right leg back. You're in plank or modified plank. And then take the vinyasa through chaturanga and upward facing dog or meet in downward facing dog. Second side, inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes. Inhale, come into high lunge. Your torso comes up, your arms come up. Take another couple cycles of breath. Use the inhale as an opportunity to lengthen through all four sides of your torso. The exhale allows you to drop deeper into your left knee. So one more inhale, lifting up through the crown of your head. Exhale, bending deeper into that left knee. And then lower both hands inside your left foot. Heel toe your left foot out towards the left side of the mat. And then lower your forearms onto the ground. Or for the modification, stay up on your hands. And then start to let your left knee drop open to the left side of the room. You're in lizard pose. You're on the outer edge of your left foot. Feel the opening and stretch around your left hip. And plant your left foot back down onto the ground. If you are on your forearms, come back up onto your hands. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up. Step your left leg back, you're in plank or modified plank. And then take the vinyasa or meet in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, turn your gaze between your palms and either step or bend your knees and hop forward into Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. And you're back in Tadasana. 
rooting your feet down into the ground, reestablishing your foundation. Take another couple cycles of breath and evaluate, were you able to bring this evenness of Tadasana into your high lunge and lizard pose? And now step your feet about four feet apart. Hands on your hips. Inhale, lengthen up through your chest. Exhale, fold forward. Fingertips on the ground. Prasarita Padottanasana A. Widen your stamps. Your sorry, right, widen your stance to make the ground more accessible. Flatten your palms onto the ground. We're gonna be here for several cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Hands on your hips, flatten your back. Inhale, start to come up through your torso and then step your feet together standing back in Tadasana, in mountain pose. So we're gonna to start to work more on our balance. You had a dry run at this when we were on our hands and knees in tabletop and you were reaching one leg back at a time and maybe reaching the opposite arm forward. We're gonna come into our tree pose, into Vrikshasana. Step your feet either together or they can be hip width apart, whichever you choose. Shift the weight of your body onto your right foot. Inhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Interlace your fingers around your left knee. Take a cycle of breath. We're gonna take this one movement at a time. And then keep your left hand on your left knee. Open your left knee up to the left side of the room. Grab your hand onto your left ankle and place your left foot onto the inner part of your right thigh. Vacuum seal that, so press your right thigh into your left foot, your left foot back into your right thigh. Imagine that they're magnets. Press your hands together in the center of your chest. And usually I invite you to take whatever modification you need to. And if you're gonna cross that threshold and risk injury, then you should take a modification, which is to press your foot into your shin or have your toes on the ground with your left heel right above your left ankle. But otherwise today in our practice of equanimity in our search for menuchat nefesh resting of the soul in turbulence, I wanna encourage you to try the traditional form of tree pose. Inhale, you can extend your arms up, palms face in towards each other. Take another inhale. And exhale. One more inhale, lengthening through all four sides of your torso. And then exhale, lower your hands back onto your hips. Take your left knee back out in front and lower your left foot onto the ground. Second side, and it's so interesting to notice the difference between each side of your body. So this pose might grow much more accessible on your left side, or it might be even more challenging. Shift the weight of your body onto your left foot. That left foot and leg will be your foundation. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Interlace your fingers around your right knee and pause for a moment. Take your right hand onto your right knee, reach your right knee out towards the right side of the room, grab onto your right ankle and press your right foot into your left thigh, left thigh back into your right foot, seal it. 
Those of you who read my emails, you know that I've been on this cooking spree. So I always like to think of it as a vacuum seal. Not that I have a vacuum sealer, but great way to marinate things, let them soak and absorb. That's the type of seal that you're going for with your foot and your thigh. If you're finding stability, inhale, add a little bit more heat and challenge, lift your arms up and remember your mountain pose. You're pretty much in it. You're like mountain pose with a balance. Return to the equanimity of mountain pose. Find your Tadasana in this balance. One more inhale, exhale, lower your arms down, right knee back into your chest and step your right foot down. And just rotate from your right foot to your left foot, from your left foot to your right foot, just wiggle your body out. We're gonna do another version of a standing balance pose. If Vrikshasana, if tree pose was plenty for you to work on, you can stick with that. You can continue to find your Tadasana in Vrikshasana, finding your mountain pose in your tree pose. Go for it. I'm gonna invite those of you who would like to uh, move on to a figure four pose. So shift the weight of your body back into your right foot. Draw your left foot into, the, into your chest. And now rotate your left knee towards the left side of the room. Your, right, your left shin is going to go towards the right side of the room and stack your left ankle on top of your right knee. And see how the shape of my legs makes a figure four. Press your palms together in the center of your chest and then start to bend into your right knee lower your tush towards the ground. Those of you who are familiar with Utkatasana, with a chair pose, that's the direction you wanna be headed in, shifting your hips back. If you're finding some stability here, you can lift your arms up like you're sitting in chair pose. One more inhale, exhale, straighten up through your right leg, left knee comes into your chest, lower your left arms and lower your left foot onto the ground. Back in Tadasana. Pause for a moment. Another insight into our search for equanimity. One of my yoga teachers writes, that the waves keep coming, but you don't get swept away by them. Explaining that the search for equanimity is kind of like surfing. You can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. This ability to remain balanced amidst ever-changing conditions is the balance of equanimity. Second side, shift the weight of your body onto your left foot. Again, you can keep working on your tree pose. If you're moving on, draw your right knee into your chest. Start to rotate that right knee towards the right side of the room. Your right shin goes towards the left side of the room. Stack your right ankle on top of your left knee. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And then inhale, shift your hips back. Coming into your chair position, but with a balance. Once your hips are shifted back, you can either stay here or you can lift your arms up and forward. Another couple cycles of breath. Find your Tadasana in this figure four. Press into your left foot, rise up, right knee into your chest, 
arms down, right foot down, and you're back in Tadasana. Arms extend out into a T position. Step your feet about four feet apart. Rotate your entire right leg out towards the right side of the room. Angle your back foot in about 45 degrees. Coming into triangle pose. Inhale, reach your right arm forward. Your hip goes towards the back of the room. And then lower your right hand onto your shin, your ankle, or the ground, and rotate your top arm up towards the ceiling. Stack your top shoulder above your bottom shoulder. Triangle pose. Inhale. And exhale. Rooting down through that back foot pressing your big toe of your front foot into the mat. Gaze comes up towards the ceiling, right by your top hand. One more inhale. Exhale, root down into your feet, bring your torso up. And then rotate your right foot back towards parallel with your left foot and second side. Rotate your entire left leg towards the left side of the room. Angle your back foot in about 45 degrees. You want your front heel aligned with the arch of your back foot. Turn your gaze out over your left arm. And then inhale, left arm stretches towards the left side of the room. Lower your left hand onto your shin, your ankle, or the mat, and then swing your top arm up towards the ceiling and find yourself back in that triangle pose. Inhale, as you press the outer part of your front thigh forward towards the side of the mat, press the inner part of your back thigh towards the opposite side of the mat. Gaze up to the ceiling. Inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, lift your torso up, arms out to the side. Lower your hands onto your hips. Rotate your left foot in so that it's parallel with your right foot and pause for a moment. You can step your feet together. We've reached our second peak pose, Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. So among the benefits of warrior two, physically, it is another way to stretch our hips, open up our hips and stretch our groin. It's a good way to work the legs and the ankles and to reach out through your shoulders, open up your shoulders. And a final benefit, which is why I think it's so relevant to equanimity, is it's a good way to work on our stamina. Pima Chadron said, to cultivate equanimity, we practice catching ourselves when we feel attraction or aversion before it hardens into grasping or negativity. So I want you to observe yourself in warrior two, and I'm gonna demonstrate it in just a moment. Observe yourself and catch yourself before you harden into negativity, because we're gonna hold it for a bit. So step your feet out about four feet, and uh, I'll first demonstrate it, and then we can do it together. I'm gonna to reach my arms out into a T position, I'm gonna rotate my entire right leg towards the right side of the room. My back foot, I'm gonna angle in about 45 degrees. So similar setup for triangle, but I want my feet further apart. And I'm gonna inhale and I'm gonna lift my heart and chest up. And then as I exhale, I'm gonna bend into my right knee. 
I want my right knee stacked over my right ankle and I'm drawing my right thigh towards parallel with the ground. And remembering my Tadasana, my mountain pose, I don't wanna to lean too far to the right. I wanna keep my torso stacked above my hips. It's part of how I'm gonna find the neutrality, the evenness in this warrior two. And with each inhale, I'm gonna lengthen up through my torso and with each exhale, I'm gonna bend deeper into my front knee while keeping my back foot anchored into the ground. It's part of my foundation. That's an important part of my Tadasana. Okay, let's try it together. So feet about four feet apart, arms out into a T position, rotate your entire right leg towards the right side of the room. Inhale, lengthen up through your torso, and then exhale, bend into your right knee. Right knee stacks above your right ankle as you draw your right thigh towards parallel with the ground. Press down into all four sides of your back foot. Don't lose that anchor. And then inhale, reaching up through the crown of your head. Exhale, lowering deeper into that right knee. Soften your tongue. Curl the edges of your mouth up. For those of you who watched any of the Julia Child videos that I sent you, recall those heroes in our lives during the heat of challenge who are able to maintain a calm sense of order and maybe, just maybe, even chuckle at themselves. One more inhale, exhale, straighten your right leg, lower your hands on your hips, and then rotate your right foot towards parallel with your left foot. And second side, rotate your entire left leg out towards the left side of the room, angle your back foot in about 45 degrees, arms out in a T position, inhale, lengthen up through your torso, and exhale, start to bend into your left knee. Root down into that back foot. It's how you can maintain your Tadasana, maintain your mountain pose in this warrior two. Gaze out over your left arm towards the front of the room. And remember that a lot of us are inclined to shift our torso forward Stack your torso back above your hips. Each inhale, you're reaching up through the crown of your head, and each exhale, you're deepening the bend of your front knee. Working the thigh towards parallel with the ground. And another plug for equanimity is that so often in life, we're focused on the result, And sometimes we have no control over the result. Instead, focus on the integrity of the effort. So rather than getting bummed out that maybe we can't have our front thigh perfectly parallel with the ground, Find meaning, pleasure, and evenness in the effort that you're exerting. One more inhale. Exhale, straighten that left leg, hands on your hips. Rotate your left foot parallel with your right foot. And then step your feet together and come back into your Tadasana, into your mountain pose. Arms alongside your chest. Great job. Inhale. And exhale. 
step back to the top of your mat. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. Lower your knees onto the ground. Untuck your toes. Draw your big toes together. Shift your hips back and return to your child's pose. Forehead on the ground. This time, lengthen your arms with your fingertips towards the back of the room. So your arms are, are alongside of your thighs. I'm gonna pause for a few cycles of breath. You've done great. You found your warrior two. Take another inhale and exhale as we begin our cool down. And come to sit up on your tush and press the soles of your feet together. Your knees are reaching towards opposite sides of the room and down towards the ground. Grab onto your feet. Imagine that your feet are like a book. Open that book up so that you can see the oh so beautiful bottoms of your feet. Inhale, lengthen up through your chest. And then exhale, start to fold your torso forward towards your feet. Come into Baddha Konasana. And some of you might lower your torso a third of the way down or halfway down. Others who have a lot of flexibility, you may bring your torso very close to your feet and press your forearms into the ground. A benefit of all of those hip openers and stretching of the groin that we did in all of the previous poses is that Baddha Konasana might be more accessible to you right now than it typically is. Inhale and exhale. and start to lift your torso up and extend your legs out in front of you. And I wanna encourage you to grab hold of your strap again. You're gonna come into a seated forward fold, Paschimottanasana. And I'm gonna use my strap today. I wanna to encourage you to do the same. So take the strap, place it over the balls of your feet. If you don't have a strap, that's totally cool or do you, if you want the traditional propless version of Paschimottanasana, that's cool too. Inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head, and then exhale, start to bend your elbows out to opposite sides of the room as you bring your torso towards your thighs. We'll be here for three cycles of breath. Lift your torso up, remove the strap. And I wanted to leave time for a really proper restorative Shavasana, a restorative final pose. Equanimity is resting the soul and it is now time to rest the soul without the heat. So a couple of options. One, if you're a fan of Viparita Karani, of putting your legs up the wall, with your back flat on the ground, go ahead and do that. If you assembled the props that I suggested at the start of the class, 
Here's how I'm gonna invite you to set them up. Take your blocks, your two blocks or books, and form the letter T out of them. So you're gonna place one horizontally across the mat, and the other is gonna be vertically connecting to it. So it makes a version of the letter T. Next is to stack either your blanket or your pillow on top of the blocks and have, if you're using a pillow or a blanket, have it so the edge of the pillow comes just to the bottom of your letter T with your blocks or books. And again, this is just another option. If you're doing this one, sit with your lower back just by the edge of the T, bend your knees, stretch your arms out in front of you, and then lower down onto your back onto this pillow tower, lower your arms towards the ground by your torso, and then stretch your legs either forward, or if you wanna continue with these hip openers, you can put your legs in a Baddha Konasana pose, pressing the soles of your feet together and letting your knees fall open to opposite ends of the room. This is delicious. And another option, if that's too much of a chest opener for you, or you don't have the fancy blocks or books, another option is to take a blanket or a towel, fold it over so that it's in this kind of a shape, and come into Shavasana and just place the blanket right on top of your hips using your blanket or your towel as just a way to put weight on you and further ground you into your Shavasana. So pick a version of a final resting pose that works for you. Return to a slow and steady cycle of breath. and relax. Start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes, bringing some life back into your body. Inhale, draw your knees into your chest and roll over onto your right side. Let your right knee, let your knees fall over to the right. Find yourself in a fetal position, pause. Press your hands into the ground and push yourself up into a seated position, into Sukhasana. 
hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. And with your eyes open or closed, resume your slow and steady cycle of breath. And in this practice, honoring equanimity, minuchat nefesh, resting the soul, I offered you two peak poses, Tadasana mountain pose and warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. And it's the Tadasana that I hope you can take with you into your week, off the mat, into your life. As we all work on this soul trait of equanimity. Like a mountain, learning to be present and rooted in whatever situation life presents. But asserting ourselves, positioning ourselves in an even manner with the ability to turn our head to the left, turn our head to the right. I mean that literally, figuratively, politically, to take it all in with an evenness, to weather through the storm Press your palms together in the center of your chest. I want to invite you to think of an element of your life or a relationship in your life that would benefit from which you would benefit from greater, greater equanimity. How can you approach that element or that relationship with minuchat nefesh? Inhale and exhale, lower your chin to your chest. Seal that final thought in as your kapana, as your intention for the week. Let your eyes open. Shabbat shalom and namaste. It's a pleasure as always.